We'll get right into this episode, but first, I just want to remind everyone that while it may look like things are returning to normal, there's a very good possibility that these lockdowns will continue into next year. And if that happens, it's more likely that we're all going to have to deal with food shortages. Don't just wait and hope that things are going to work out. Be proactive and make sure that you and your family won't have to worry about food shortages. And I trust and use my Patriot Supply. You can too. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. Preparewithdronetech.com. I wanted to follow up on you said about the small business program, Harvard's going to pay the money back. How confident are you that you can claw back money for well, places I'm gonna have like to look. I don't like when Harvard, that has, I think, a $40 billion endowment or some incredible amount of money that Harvard gets this money. Harvard should pay that money back. I want Harvard to pay the money back, okay? They have to pay it back. I don't like it. I don't like it. This is meant for workers. This isn't meant for one of the richest institutions, not only far beyond schools, in the world. You gotta pay it back. I want them to pay it back. Welcome back, everyone. Since Trump was elected, we've seen the rise of these so-called fact-checkers who claim to be objective defenders of truth and justice, but turn out just to be partisan political operatives. Today, I have a couple examples of this coming from CNN and the Washington Post. Over at CNN, our highfalutin bettors are outraged because Trump called out Harvard to pay back their $9 million stimulus check since they currently enjoy a $45 billion endowment. Trump simply demanded that they pay back their $9 million stimulus and dip into their own billions, which, by the way, is the biggest endowment in the country. President Trump went after Harvard, basically claiming that they had sort of sucked up some of the funds that were supposed to be for small businesses. Harvard has refuted that. What's the truth here? It's a total fabrication. Facts first, the president was completely wrong. Oh boy, you got that everyone? A complete fabrication. You can almost feel her seething anger as she makes that very specific declaration of complete fabrication. I'm sure that she has some major truth bombs to drop on us now. Harvard did not steal money from small businesses. Let's be clear, there was a separate multi-billion dollar fund set up for educational institutions. Now, Harvard does happen to be the richest college in the world. It has a $40 billion endowment. So you can understand perhaps some questions being asked here. <laughs> Wait a minute here. First she said that what Trump said is a total fabrication, then goes on to say that they are the richest in the country and that asking questions about that is legitimate. That's some straight up Orwellian shit right there. So Harvard does have a lot of money and they don't need $8 million from the government. And they aren't the only filthy rich university getting millions from the government. Princeton is getting $2.4 million and Yale is receiving $6.9 both universities have multi-billion dollar endowments. I just, I can't wait to see what ridiculous spin this hack uses to justify saying that Trump lied. Harvard have said, and perhaps we could question the timing, we don't know, that all this money is going to go to their students that come from low to moderate income families. Okay, this doesn't disprove anything Trump said. $9 million is a drop in the bucket to Harvard or any of these Ivy League prestigious universities. Why can't they just give the $9 million back and pay it out of their own pocket. They definitely could, but it's free money. Again, this is exactly what Trump said, and it's 100% accurate. The second thing is an endowment is there to make sure that this university, this college, lasts forever. It's not like a piggy bank. Are you fucking kidding me? It's literally a piggy bank. Lady, everyone is struggling, and most of us don't have multiple tens of billions of dollars to dip into. There's lots of other universities and colleges out there, nowhere near as rich as Harvard or Princeton that could no doubt benefit from this money. But all of this is just a distraction from the fact this alleged fact checker hasn't disproved anything that Trump said. In fact, she confirmed it. All she's done is offer up rationalizations and justifications for why it's okay for Harvard to keep the nine million. Over at the Washington Post, we have another very curious example of a fake journalist hyperbolically calling Trump a liar, then proving him right in the preceding fact check. The WHO failed to investigate credible reports from sources in Wuhan that conflicted directly with the Chinese government's official accounts. There was credible information to suspect human-to-human -human transmission in December 2019, which should have spurred the WHO to investigate and investigate immediately. Through the middle of January, it parroted and 
publicly endorsed the idea that there was not human-to-human -human transmission happening despite reports and clear evidence to the contrary. The delays the WHO experience in declaring a public health emergency cost valuable time. Where's the lie? Everything Trump said there is true. The fake fact checker started his piece with this line. For the purposes of this fact check, we will examine the part of Trump's statement that holds some credibility that the World Health Organization did not alert the world quickly that the new virus could travel among people. Okay, that seems to be the main gist of Trump's statement. So this guy goes on to lay out a timeline of the WHO's response to this outbreak, saying, through the middle of January, January, it parroted and publicly endorsed the idea that there was not human to human transmission. This conflicts with what Trump said, how? This is reminding me a lot of the other fact check that we just looked at, where a hyperbolic, over emotional pronouncement of lies is declared as if to condition the mind of the viewer. Then the fact check ends up being a bunch of spin and deflections to excuse or justify the criticisms that they claim are a lie. It's like a dollar store Jedi mind trick. The Washington Post story is behind a paywall so I can't show you the actual article but the blaze did a really good write-up and showed that there's at least nine times throughout the article where the Washington Post actually proves Trump's point making the three Pinocchio rating even more baffling this total hack of a fact checker moves his goalposts and claims that Trump's lie is that he expects the World Health Organization to investigate the outbreak for him why exactly are we giving them 600 million dollars every other year eclipsing every other country in foundation on this planet. This guy literally didn't debunk anything Trump said. All he did was deflect blame from the World Health Organization and China. This isn't fact checking, this is political propaganda. That's all for this episode. I just wanted to let you all know about this tactic I noticed them using and it seems to be very popular in the DNC media. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pin comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.